What exam should you take first? When you are starting to gather all your resources information for the architecture exams and you see that there's six exams to take, you're like, okay, cool, where do I start? Yes, NCARB gives a basic like list of the different exams but you will hear and you'll find out as you start gathering information that some people recommend starting with one while others recommend starting with another now when I very first started I thought that I was going to start with one of the exams and then switch to the other I started studying and a few I don't know how long like maybe a week or two into it I was like "Uh, uh-uh, I'm going back to the drawing board so let's talk about it today I want to talk to you about what exam you should start first and why. Let's do it. Hey everyone, welcome to Design, Create, Inspire with me, Bryn Young. Today, I want to talk to you all about what exam to take first, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why you should. And I'm also gonna tell you, if you're not doing it, why you should pivot, because it is kind of important. So you'll see tons of information out there about what people recommend. I'm not the first person who has talked about this. And so it's not new news, but I'm gonna give you some information on why. And I still, even with all the information out there, I still work with people all the time who tell me they're starting with something different for a specific reason. And I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't do that and why you should start with this one first. Okay, before we go into it, I want to give you the reason I hear the most for why people think they should start with whatever exam they want. I'm also going to tell you what exam I thought I'd start with and why, because it's one of the reasons I hear a lot too. So the first thing I hear all the time is in my job, I work on blank all the time. And that is what this exam is on. And so that is why I want to start with that exam because I have the most experience in it. Okay. So yeah, logically that makes a lot of sense, right? It totally makes sense that I every day am working on this information. And so it's clear. I totally understand it. And so it makes sense to start with what I perceive as the easiest exam so I can start with a win. But I'm going to remind you, these are scholastic exams. They're not always based in reality of what we work with every day. So in a way, what you have the most experience in can sometimes hinder you. I know that's kind of like, I like almost hesitate saying it because of course, experience in the real world is so, so valuable. You totally want it and need it. But because we are being tested on exactly what NCARB wants, which isn't always what we do in the field, then our brains can kind of forget, wait, this is what we do all the time. So obviously it's the right answer. And then you get in there and NCARB wants a different answer. So these exams are not just about what we know and our experience. It's about understanding what answers they want. Again, that can be kind of like, are you kidding me? Like, this is so ridiculous. I will tell you, when I went into PA, programming and analysis, I felt like I got this in the bag. I was running my own business. I was working on a specific site design project that was on a steep slope. We were a block from the cliffs of the ocean. We were in the coastal commission because we were close to the ocean. So we were dealing with steep slopes. We were dealing with sun, obviously, like the typical like site parameters. And we were right in the middle or just finishing all the site analysis. I was doing site diagrams. I was like having to understand how the coast and the cliffs were going to affect and the steep topography were going to affect our site. It was like I was in it. And so when I went into PA, I was like, okay, I mean, like, I've got this. This is what I'm doing. And when I failed PA, I was like, what? Huh? What? Like, how? And then also then I'm like, oh my God, this is what I'm doing. And I just failed this exam. Like, uh, these clients, uh, this is what I'm working on. Do I even know what I'm doing? (laughs) Which that's a whole nother topic. If you haven't listened to my episode that I had last week, all about what to do after you failed an exam, go listen to that, leave a link here, then come back, finish this one or finish this one, go listen to that. But anyways, all that to say is that just because you have experience in something doesn't mean you're going to get an easy win. So I have had people say, I work in construction administration, like all day, every day 
day for the last 12 years. And so they go in to take CE first and they're like, whoa, what? CE, I feel like especially, actually all of them, because a lot of architecture firms, depending on the firm that you're working in, the typology of projects you're working in, many don't even use the AIA contracts. So for me, I was working in industry for a long time, custom residential, where we received an AIA contract from an architect, a young architect, because that's what we are taught. And the contractor was like, I'm not signing this. This is just protecting the architect. We don't even do the AIA contracts. And so what we're used to in the real world is not necessarily what we're going to be studying on. So if that is your argument, I'm going to start with this exam because this is what my experience is in. I highly recommend you double think that and take the advice from many of us who have passed these exams and understand what they're looking for versus what our experience is. Now, the second one, and this was my logic for when I first started. The second thing that I hear often is I want to start with the hard exams because if I start with the hard exams, I start off, you know, with up the hill and then it'll just get easier. And so I just want to start off with, you know, just going hard, going fast. Let's just do it. And I think this is such a typical like architect mindset. Like so many of us, it's like we can do hard things and let's just do it. Like, come at me. We got this. And again, that's not the way to do it. And I quickly learned like when I was starting to study and, you know, we were talking about different like connections and moment frames. I'm like, hmm. I don't know. Maybe I should start with some of the other exams like people recommend. I am so glad that I did. I'm so glad I went back to it and I took advice again of people who have gone through it. So why do I not recommend this? Because again, it's not just the content. It's best to start with the pro practice exams because a lot of what you are going to learn is literally just how to take these exams. It's not just the content. And so it's not even like, like a lot of people will think, oh, well, practice management must be really easy because a lot of people say start with practice management. It's not easy. It's a difficult exam. It is not an easy exam, but the information that you have to understand for it is a little more focused, not as broad. And you start to learn and understand what the process is like, even like what the process is like of sitting for an actual exam, what it's like to sit there for three, four hours and take this exam, what it's like to receive the results, how am I going to feel when I receive these results? How are the actual questions on the exam going to match up with the practice exams I've taken? It's not just the content. It's understanding and getting comfortable with the process of what these exams actually look like. And so I recommend starting with practice management. Highly, highly recommend it. The other reason why I recommend it is because it's like a building block. These exams are all building blocks. Think of it like architecture. We start with a foundation and we move our way up. We're not going to start with P PDD, which is like, you know, the roof finish and the tile because there's no foundation yet. You got to start and you got to work up and you got to build up the process. And that way, when you get to PPD, which I arguably think is more difficult than PDD, you have these basic foundations. So you're not having to think like, oh, how am I going to navigate the testing center? Like you've got that. That's just like old news now. You're not thinking like, oh, what's A201? What's that contract again? You got that, right? So you have that foundational knowledge by the time you get to PPD, PDD, that's like now you can focus on what you really need to focus on in order to pass. So start with practice management, then go to project management, then construction evaluation, then go to the technical exams, PA, PPD, PDD, okay? Now, I highly recommend this because project management, PCM, is going to take you into information that you will go deeper into in project management. So you're gonna start looking at contracts and practice management. You're gonna start looking at businesses and how to run a business. But then in project management, you're gonna go into a deeper dive into contracts, a deeper dive into the roles and responsibilities of everybody, of the project, who who runs the project, all that good stuff. But you already have that foundational knowledge of like how to even open a business. So now you can focus on how do I run a project. Now, CE, you're gonna do a way deeper dive into contracts, but you already have that foundational knowledge so that when additional contracts, like the G series contracts come up, you're not having to take in that information and also learn for the first time A201. You already know those foundations. Yeah, you're gonna do a deeper understanding of A201 
on. So you know it at a cellular level, but you already understand it. You already know the basics. Same thing for PA, PPD, PDD. It's like you start macro and then you go micro. So you start with PA, which is like a huge macro view of what the project is going to look like and how you are going to start setting up a project. And then you're going to go into PPD, which is very broad, but you already have that foundational understanding and knowledge of PA, which goes into PPD, but at a more detailed level. Now, PDD is going super micro. So you have an understanding already of the sun. You get it. You know where the sun is. You understand the azimuth and all that good stuff. Now, I think I titled this video uh, what to start with, but I guess I'm telling you the whole thing. <laughs> so now you go into a deeper thing so you can focus on the details. So start in that order. Start with practice management. Trust me. You will thank me. I promise. Now I know logically the next question is, okay, what happens if I fail PCM, practice management? Do I go on to project management? My recommendation is fail practice management and start focusing on taking it right as that 60 day hits. So schedule it for 60 days out. And I'm going to give you some advice here. But typically when we fail practice management, it's our very first time failing the AREs, which can come with a lot of emotion. Again, go watch my video on failing so that you can figure out how to overcome that so it doesn't tear you down and you give up. But a lot can happen with that. And so when we fail that first exam, now we need to figure out what the tools and how we need to create a plan and a system that can help us pass the next time. And so that might take a little bit longer. And also healing emotionally from that first fail may take an extra week. So schedule that first 60 days. But here's the key is schedule it. Because if you don't schedule it, it is so easy for that day to slip away. And pretty soon it's six months later, like what happened to me? And you're like, oh, I guess I have to get back in there and do this. But then the information is not fresh in your brain. It's not there, right? So schedule it for 60 days, go take it. Now, if you fail again, if you fail for a second time, then I recommend going to project management. And I have in the ultimate study plan, which is my study guide thing, I have it broken down to six week study plans. So go get inside ultimate study plan. If you want an exact week by week, what to study for six weeks, you can do it. You can study and take your exam in six weeks. So if you fail practice management for the second time, then start focusing on project management. Give yourself a week to just chill, heal, recover. There's a lot of emotion and energy that goes into taking these exams and then schedule your project management for six weeks out and do it. So that's seven weeks instead of having to wait full eight weeks and then go and take project management and then schedule your practice management again for probably 60 days. I would say go take project management give yourself a good two weeks after that to take your third practice management. You don't need a full six weeks again. You've taken this exam twice now. You've got it. Plus studying for project management is going to also be studying for practice management. Okay. So does that make sense? So take practice management. If you fail, take it again at 60 days fail again, take six, max seven weeks to take project management, and then two weeks later, take practice management again, okay? Now, I would go with the second option if you fail project management. You don't need a full 60 days, but at seven weeks, I mean, I guess, if you want to do that, but if you feel motivated and you wanna keep going, take CE next, and then do the like two, three week and then go take project management again. But I'm gonna say this because if you say you're done with PCM, you're done with PJM and you go take CE and you failed that one, but you don't have another pro practice to go with, I would wait and take CE again in 60 days before moving on to PA because the technical exams are another beast and you want to get those pro practice ones before you start diving into the technical. If you fail CE again in 60 days, which you're not going to do, but if you do, then you could start focusing, okay, let's go focus on PA. But I would recommend getting those pro practice ones done and then go over to the technical. I have a lot more information. I have tons of other videos all about like best tips, download 
upload, which gives you a lot of more tips like this, but even more, 31 of them. And I already went way more on this video than I intended. Again, I meant for it just to be like, which one to take first? But I think that all of that will help you because I know that naturally the next question of when, what do I take first is, okay, well, what happens if I fail that one? What do I take next? And how do I do that? So hopefully that created some clarity for you and hopefully can set that motivation so you can start going and taking your exams and get in there and do it. And don't take years to feel like you're 100% ready to get in there and take it. I promise you, you will never feel 100% ready. I promise you. Promise, promise, promise. I never once felt 100% ready. I never even clicked done with this exam and felt 100% sure that I had passed. It's like, that's just how it is. That's just how these exams are. So don't let that hinder you. You got this. You'll be done soon. And I hope that helped. And if you are totally new, if this is like your first ARE video and you're like, what are all those acronyms she just threw at my brain? Like, what is she even talking about? Go check out my ARE playlist. Do a deep dive. I've got a video on each exam. Go get my 31 tips. That's kind of like a good start. And get my ARE resource guide. It's just a free like download but it tells you exactly the books that I recommend to study for each exam. So you're not having to like buy everything. So those are kind of good starting points if you're new to this and you're just starting to like gather your information and your resources and all that good stuff. Okay, that is it. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next Tuesday. All right, bye.